Good morning, my friends. Good morning, people. Not yet my friends, but about to be my friends. Good to see you. Give me a shout in the comments if you can hear me, if you can see me, if you're watching live. Uh, good morning, Alex. Good to see you. Hey, David. What's up, Victor? Good morning, Amanda Blades. Thanks for hanging out with me in the green room. Hey, Drew Hitchcock. First one here. Good work. Hey, buddy. Hey, Rhino. Hey, Matt. Hey, Troy. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Susan Anderson. What's up? Hey, Samantha. Hey, Errol. Good to see all of you. Hey, Mayor. Good to see you guys. There, everybody's pouring in. Good to see all of you. The world has gone crazy. So today, we're going to keep things even more rational than normal. Hey, Raul. Hey, Alec. Hey, Alana. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Audrey. <laughs> hey, Hunter. Hey, Paul. Hey, Raul. Woo! Coming in too fast. Hey, today is the first part of our passive income series that we're doing here inside of the 1%. Hello to all of you who are watching on YouTube. Uh, just so you know, 1% members, we are considering uh, just kind of bringing these in-house and keeping them in the community and not streaming them to public places. So I uh, love your feedback on that, but a post about that coming soon. I'd really like that feedback. Um, hey, Manny. Hey, Kenan. Hey, Mike. Hey, William. Hey, Salome. Hey, Herb. Hey, Justin. Hey, Randy. Let's do this. Hey, Paulina. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about it like, seriously. Um if I could get one, if I, if I'm working with somebody and I'm never going to see them again and they ask me, like, how do I build wealth over the long term? If I could get them to do one thing, it's what we're going to talk about today. So this is really a life changer if, if you're open to it. And part of my skeptic, like my hesitation is this stuff looks boring until you go under the hood. Like it looks unsexy. And it looks deadbeat and nobody talks about it. But when you open up the hood and you look at the numbers and you look under the un, under what's going on, it's real exciting, like really exciting. So my goal today is to introduce you to what I think is really the foundation of the a passive income portfolio. And if you do only this one thing over the very long term, um, I have a feeling you'll thank me. So before we do that, I know the real reason you're here is because we do something as a, as a crew that makes election counts go faster. It makes people become more rational. It makes the economy better and it brings people together and it's something that we call the simultaneous sip. So grab a cup or a mug, a glass of chalice, a stein, a tankard, a thermos, and join me for this thing that we ripped off from Scott Adams. It's something called the simultaneous sip. Join me now. Go. Oh, I can feel the election count in Georgia, Nevada, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, all getting faster just from one sip. Amazing how we did that together. Now, uh, I'm going to share my screen with y'all. And stand by. But up, but up, up. Bump. There we go. You don't want to see your assignment just yet. Here we go. People in the green room, give me a thumbs up if you can see my uh, my screen right now. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. No one else gave me a thumbs up. So, David, you're my favorite person today. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> so, so um, I want to remind all of you if you if you remember from our previous classes, we have this course inside of the 1% called the millionaire class. The millionaire class is really the overview for building wealth and passive income. And what I'm doing in these calls is going a little bit deeper into each topic so that you can reference that course as you find things interesting or relevant to you. So I would recommend, remember you have that course in your members area for you to go through, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper into individual strategies on these lives, but that is there for you for you for you to dive into. So in this class, we're going to cover what I think is the foundation of the of, of what your portfolio might look like and its dividend paying stock. All right. So oh, oh, I forgot something. I forgot something. This is important. Required reading that for the next six weeks, we are going to be going into a different passive income strategy every week. And we sometime in the next 
four to six weeks, we're going to be interviewing the author of this book and you should get a copy of it. It's called Why Doctors Don't Get Rich. It's by Tom Burns. He's been on the podcast a couple times. It is not made for doctors, but he's a doctor and uh, he's like BFFs with Robert Kiyosaki, but put it to a practical guide because he was a high earner, right? He was a a doctor making 150000 a year, but was caught in the rat race and kind of documents his passive income journey in this book. And we're going to be interviewing him and referencing some of this. So go get this book, grab it on Amazon, get 20 bucks. Why Doctors Don't Get Rich by Tom Burns. One more time for those in the back. So go grab this, go grab a copy of this because we're going to be interviewing him in one of the classes for this series. And you'll want to be familiar with his strategies and ideas so that when we hop on a call with him, you can ask him whatever is relevant to you in your situation. So go get a copy of that. All right, now let's dive into dividend paying stock. There we go. So first, my standard disclaimer, I'm an idiot who doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't listen to a thing I'm saying. Get help from somebody much smarter than me. I'm just some dude who is an entrepreneur and I've noticed that entrepreneurs have a different risk profile and they have a different risk tolerance and different desires about how they invest. So I'm talking to entrepreneurs like me. I'm so not qualified to talk about this. So don't listen to anything that I say. This is for entertainment purposes only. And let's dive in. All right. So if I could give you one thing to do over the next years, decades, if we never see each other again and you want to build long-term wealth and passive income, I would give them this. And I mean this for people on my team. I mean this for people in our community. I mean this for my friends. When people are like, what's one thing I do? I buy dividend paying stock. Exactly what we're going to be ca- talking about today is what I would give the one like one thing to somebody. Um, I'm actually working on something that my team doesn't know about. I'm I'm um, I'm outlining like how do I put every member of my team on a path to eventually become a millionaire, and I keep coming back to this. Like this is what I'm gonna have to help them understand. This is the piece. This is the piece that if I can get them to do this, like this this will radically change change their life. So with that in mind, let's go over why we do this. Why dividends? First reason, there's no stock picking. There's no predicting what the economy is doing. There's no posturing. There's no betting. There's no guessing. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to even really be good at this. You don't have to be constantly checking your portfolio. You don't have to constantly be checking what the market is doing. It is a very simple process that you do, where you do not need to be a whiz bang stock picker to, to do extremely well with this. All right. So that, that's reason number one. Reason number two is for this thing called double compound interest. Double compound interest simply means that there are, there are a couple of things in this strategy that compound, you know, the idea of compound interest of things accelerating over time, but dividend paying stocks have two forms of them. So there's a double compound effect, which means that over time, things accelerate and and get pretty sexy. Now, why not dividends? What are the downsides? Why don't people talk about them? Why why do we not understand them more frequently or, or more often or more thoroughly? Two reasons. Number one, dividends are boring. They're predictable. They're not there. You never see top of Yahoo News that AT&T raised its dividend six cents. There's nothing to talk about. It's it's boring. You don't see that Coca Cola. You might see that Coca Cola got banned in California, and the stock goes down. What you don't see is that Coca-Cola still raises its dividend five cents. Why would you care? There's nothing to talk about. It's boring. It's predictable. So it's not sexy. The second reason why not dividends is because they're, they tend to be old businesses, established businesses that have been around for a long time, have, have 
are out of their growth curve. They're not Zoom or Netflix. They're no longer on this exponential growth curve in terms of the the, the share price of the stock. So you're, you're not going to, it's not going to have an aggressive growth plan, at least in the short term. They, so they're, they tend to be old established businesses that might not go up in value with the rest of the market. So you're not, you're are almost never going to see an example like Netflix, which goes from $55 to $1,000 a share. You're almost never going to see that when it comes to dividend paying stock. You're also almost never going to see a stock go from $55 to zero. I do know of one example in which that happened and it was Blockbuster. So Blockbuster got put out of business and they would have met this criteria. So that would have been a bad pick. They would have, they they were a great dividend stock for a very long time. So the risk with dividends is you're working with old established businesses that have been around for a long time. They could potentially be disrupted in the marketplace, but they've also been around for 50 years and tend to have a track record of growing over time. So once again, this is just kind of like boring. You're not buying Tesla. You're not buying you're not buying the new whiz bank thing, which means there tends to be lower risk. Not always, but there tends to be lower risk. And they don't accelerate up in value as quickly. So now that I have unsold that properly, um, now that I have properly framed this to, to, to scare you away from it, I'll say this. I'm yet to find a better investment over the very, very long term. Asterix, I'm only 33, so what do I know about long term, right? But I'm yet to find anything that over time beats dividend paying stock. I have gotten in debates with financial planners. I've gotten in debates with other people who study this. But when you run the numbers, it's hard to find a flaw. All right, so here's the strategy in one slide. The big idea is this. The big idea is that we're going to seek to acquire dividend paying stocks that increase their dividend over time so that it compounds over time. So the example on, on the screen is if it pays a 5% dividend in year one and it's increasing 10% per year, then year two, it's 5.5%. If it's year three, it's 6.05%. Year four, it's 6.6%. Year five, it's 7.3% on your original money. You know, if, if I were to be really accurate here, what this would read is more like this. It would actually read, uh, instead of percents, $2, then uh, $2.2, then two point for two dollars and now we're at 25 so uh this is 290 about and then this ends up being no i got something wrong in here 20 275 that's what this is this is two 267 and then three dollars we'll call it all right so if i were to be really accurate what it's doing is raising the nominal amount of the dividend every year. But on a percentage basis, that's going up. That's going up over time. So now, once again, if you see that a stock raises dividend from $2 to $3 over five years, well, that's not very exciting until you see it on a percentage basis. And then it's really exciting. All right, so that's the first part. We're gonna we're gonna seek to acquire dividend paying stock that increase their dividend over time, so that that compounds. And number two, we're seeking to reinvest those dividends to buy more and more stock, so that our passive income compounds over time. Or what that should really say is so that the amount of stock that we own compounds over time. So the dividend amount is going up. And the amount of stock shares that we own is going up. And that's a double compound interest. Does that make sense? 
Give me a give me a yay in the chat box if this makes sense. Give me a nay if it does not, and I'll explain it more. But because the because the increase is going because the amount we're getting paid is going up, and because we're reinvesting it to buy more shares, it means that we've got two forms of passive and we've got two forms of compound interest. Higher higher cash flow coming in, more stock coming in. Those two things together create double compound interest and they work together. Okay, good. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So that is the double compound interest piece of this. Now there's a few rules that we're gonna look for. Rule number one, we only buy stocks that have raised their dividend every year for the past 10 years or more. So every year for the last 10 years or more. We're looking for stocks that have proven that over a long time, they're gonna keep raising their dividend. Rule number two, we only buy stocks that have at least a 3.5 to 4% dividend the first year. Why? Because that's enough of a return for us to indicate, okay, like this is good enough to start. Compound interest builds over time, but we need to be, we need to have a, a decent foundation to start with. And that decent foundation for us is gonna be starting at three and a half to 4% per year. Year one, that is. Year one. So so when we when we first buy a stock, we want it to be paying three and a half to four percent. Now we can get that on almost any stock if we do the next rule well, which is we only buy stocks on bad news. Because that's when they fall into buy territory. So um there's a couple examples I'll go through, but the, the 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 trend of things is that once a year, maybe every three years, just about every stock has some bad news come out that crater its stock price. That's when we buy. That's what that's our entry signal, and we have indicators of when to go in, and that indicator is when the dividend is three and a half to four percent. So an example that I'll just riff with you, Procter & Gamble, most boring stock in the entire world because they sell like, you know, scotch tape and RX bars. No, that's Kellogg's. Kellogg's is actually a good one too. But, you know, they, they, they're just a boring company that owns everything and they sell everything. Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble tends to go up a little bit every year. And then like every three to five years, there's boom. And that's when you buy. And then it comes back up. Over three to five years, boom, there's one event. And it did, and Procter & Gamble, you could look it up, pays maybe a 2.5% dividend. But on those boom days, and it crosses in that three to five to 4% territory, that's, that's our sign. That's when we scoop that one up. All right, so that's rule number three. We only buy on bad news. And we can be confident that the news is temporary because this stock has raised its dividend, has enough profits over the last 10 years to keep raising its dividend. So all these rules together create our, our criteria. And now number four, we only buy stocks with existing profits so that we know that they will continue to pay the dividend over time. An example, oil companies right now are unbelievably sexy right now. But because of the last year, they've lost money. They have not made money in the last year. They've lost money. ExxonMobil lost 70 cents per share last quarter. So we don't buy right now. Now, if that company becomes profitable again, which it probably will, then we would consider buying. But only then. We don't buy stocks when they're not paying, when they don't have profits, because that's threatening our dividend. That's threatening the ship. So we wait until it's profitable again. 
And then we can go back in. Then we can then we can buy more. Um, an, a, a quick example of this: Caterpillar stock, super profitable in the early two thousands. I owned a lot of it, and uh, then one year, they didn't have profits. They lost money, so I sold all my stock. They didn't raise their dividend. I'm like, oh, that's a bad sign. I'm out. That was probably a mistake because they got back on track and they grew through it and they started raising their dividend again. But in retrospect, I just shouldn't have bought more, right? You don't want to buy more when they're not profitable, but it's okay to hold stocks if you've got them. Like I have some Exxon Mobil. I have some oil companies. I'm not selling them, but I'm not buying more right now. Even though that dividend is super sexy, I don't want to buy a company that's not profitable. So we wait for it to be profitable again, and then we go back in. All right, so those are our rules. Does this make sense? Uh, Monica asks, when was the last time they dropped? Every stock goes through waves, and you can count on every three to five years or so it having a major, a major dip. Now, you have to understand that's that's not sexy again like i'm gonna tell you hey buy caterpillar stock but not for two years that might be the best advice i ever give you but it doesn't make you excited now <laughs> so the trick here is for us to have a list of stocks that we're paying attention to and not every day not every week but maybe every month we might check in and see what's going on. So, uh, by the way, there's a lot of questions in the chat box like, what do I think about these stocks? I'm not going to go through like my opinion of a bunch of different sectors. I'm just not going to do that. I want you to get the strategy today and I'll go through some of the examples that I am personally tracking. So we're, I'm not, we're not going to give my opinion on every sector, on every little thing. This, this is what you need to know right now. All right, so there's a question about when when is it a good time to buy? When it crosses three and a half to four percent yield. So look at look at these rules again. Rules. We only buy stocks that raise their dividend every year. We only buy stocks that have crossed three and a half to four percent dividend. We buy stocks on bad news because that's when their dividend yield is sexy enough. And we only buy stocks with existing profits. All right, now here's an example. Target. This is just a great classic example. Target has raised its dividend every year for 49 years. Not always a lot, sometimes just a little bit, but every year it raises its dividend for the last 49 years. Now, uh, hold on, wait, let me add something. It, whoa, no. In November 2017, Target was trading near $80 with a, with a dividend of $2.25. So that was about a 2.8, 2.9% dividend. That's 2.9 divided by $80, or sorry, 2.25 divided by $80 is like 2.9%. Now, the next quarter, the next quarter, Amazon announced that it was buying Whole Foods and every retail company in the world crumbled. And Target came down to 50, between 50 and $55 a share. So bad news for the company, stock comes way down. But the kicker is just because the paper value of the stock comes down, does not mean the dividend changes. The dividend was still $2.25 per share. So what does that mean for the percentage of your return if you were to buy stocks now? It goes way up. So now it's a 4.1% return on your money. Now that still might not light the world on fire, but fast forward two more years, and today Target trades near $160 a share. That's a 3x return on your money, which is amazing. But you would now be getting a 5% return cash flow on your money because why? Two reasons. The dividend continues to raise 
and because you reinvested those dividends to buy more shares. So now you're getting over a 5% return on your money in cash flow, but the stock has gone up three times. Does that make sense? Do you get that? So now you've won twice. You've won twice because you've got the cash flow of 5%, and you've won the second time because you tripled your money with the paper value of the stock. Now, I'm going to show you something that I'm, I'm going to do live um, because you won't believe me if I just tell you. Now, the, the point that I want you to get from all of this is the returns might look really boring at the beginning. 5% dividend. Who cares? But they get real sexy over time. So I am going to run some numbers in front of you. And as we run this, this might be hard to believe. So I'm just gonna show you live. All right, so come take a look at this little handy tool right here. There we go, and there we go. So this little handy tool is a dividend calculator. So this will this will simply calculate what it's going to be over time. Now I know this is going to be a little bit hard to see for you. Um, I wonder if I can. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what I'm going to put in here is ten thousand dollars for our for our starting amount. No contributions over time. We're just going to do $10,000 one time. It'll just keep things real, real simple. Let's pretend the stock price is $25. And the stock price, actually, let's bump this up. Let's say let's say the stock goes up 9%. Because historically, if you ask a financial planner, how much is the stock market going to go up? They're going to say on average, 9% a year. And you keep that in for 20 years. So this is a long-term investment. And the, and the stock is paying a 6% dividend. In fact, let, let's bump this down just to be a little bit more conservative. So a 5% yield, but it goes up 10% per year. So pretty simple. This is a, this is a pretty standard example. $25 stock, 5% yield, but it's going to go up 10% per year. For, for 20 years, let's take a look at these numbers. All right, so calculation of this calculator says, let's take a look at year one, just so you can kind of get a grip on this. $10,000 starting balance, 400 shares at $25 a share. It goes up 9%, so $900. $500 in cash flow and dividends, but we reinvested that, we bought more stocks. And so after one year, our $10,000 is now worth $11,400. Pretty standard. Now take a look at this. As we go through, remember, our dividends are going up 10% per year plus whatever we've reinvested, that double compound interest. So this column here is cash flow. This is our cash flow. 10 years in, our $10,000 investment is now producing a 16, almost a $1,700 per year in passive income, which is 17%, 17% on our original money. And the stock continues to grow and we continue to buy more shares. So as we continue to go at the end of 20 years, our $10,000 is now producing $7,000 a year. So a 70% return on cash flow. And our total portfolio here from this $10,000 investment is $142,900 from a $10,000 investment. So do you see where this is going in terms of what happens when you have that double compound interest starting to grow? This starts off real slow, but that engine gets real sexy over time. Now, watch what happens if we add 10 more years. If you are, uh, if you are, forty-five or under, and we're talking about retirement here, if we just change this to thirty years, 
are come on oh ha <laughs> ha i changed the wrong column 25 dollars 30 years zero contributions just your original 10 grand 30 years later that ten thousand dollar contribution is now thirty thousand dollars a year in cash flow and that ten thousand dollars has become five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars are you starting to see where you could be oh i didn't show you my screen ah <laughs> so 30 years thirty thousand dollars a year in cash flow five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in total portfolio value from a $10,000 investment. Now, is it going to be this predictable? Probably not. But this is what happens when you have that double compound interest. Now, here's the part. This is where you won't believe me. So tune in, guys. Just, I'm going to show you something and you're going to have a hard time believing this. So pay attention to what I do here. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the in expected increase of this stock to zero. Zero. So what we're doing here is saying, all right, we're going to buy a dividend paying stock that pays us 5% interest, but the stock never goes up in value. It just stays $25 forever. What happens if that's the case? So the stock never grows. It just pays a dividend. We calculate this return. Let's check this out. The growth is now zero, zero, zero all the way down. Our dividends, however, $10,000 a year is now a million dollars. And our total portfolio value is $2.7 million. How the F is that possible? That if the stock doesn't go up, the portfolio is worth more. How the F is that possible? Is your brain playing tricks on you right now? What we're just calculating is that if the stock price doesn't change, you make more money than if it goes up. How is that? How is it that if the stock doesn't go up in price, that your income goes from zero to a million dollars a year? How is that possible? Makes no sense, right? Now, two things to know here. One, this is a fantasy example that doesn't exist in the real world. So is it always going to be like this? No, of course not. Is it always going to be this straightforward? Absolutely not. It never is going to be like this. However, what I want you to get out of seeing that is all of, all of you talking about what about taxes and what about inflation? Uh, how, how is it if you just sit on it? You can't change that, folks. Now, what, what what the hell did we just see here? Well, what you saw was that the stock price never grew, so your dividends were buying more and more and more and more and more. Your dividends were being reinvested to get more shares of the stock that was producing this dividend. And so, in this fantasy example that doesn't exist in the real world, you make more money if the stock doesn't go up in price. So everyone who is talking about, well, the stock went from this price to this price, they could be missing the whole game. They could be missing the whole thing. If the game is cash flow, if the game is predictability, the people who are trying to bet on it going from one price to another are, are missing out. So this is why it's so important. You take the drama out of this. You take the stock picking out of this. You, you, pick, you take the stock predictions out of this. You take the economy out of this. 
And now you're in a position where you really have much more control of your financial future. Even if it doesn't seem sexy at first, it compounds into crazy numbers over the long term. Okay, so you guys good to keep going or do your brains hurt? Do you need a break here or are you guys good? I What we're going to do next is go through uh, a couple of examples. There it is. Manny got it. When a stock drops, you're buying more on sale. Hence the portfolio. Yes, you got it, Manny. You absolutely got it. So it is not about predicting what's going to happen. It's about buying the cash flow on sale. So um, I heard it once put, if, uh, if you own geese that lay golden eggs and the goose is laying golden eggs consistently, you want to own as many geese as possible, right? What happens if the price of geese goes down? Are you like, ooh, I can't sell my geese for the same amount? Or are you like, give me more of those geese? I want to buy more. Give me more. Of course, of course you want to buy. You want, you're, the game is the golden eggs. You want as many golden eggs as possible. <laughs> Manny got it. <laughs> All right, Justin's brain hurts. So maybe some examples will help. Um, let me move my screen back. So let's go through some examples that I think will help. Now you can follow along. You can just use your fancy Google machine to follow along. Here are some examples that I'm watching right now that I like and uh, we can we can pull these up individually. In fact, uh, if you want to write these down real quick, I'm going to stop sharing these in a second so I can show you the actual chart of this and we'll go through these examples. So I'm going to give you eight seconds to write these down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So we're going to go through these examples one by one so that you really get this. Whoop. And of course, that was stupid of me. Wrong button. So, stand by. Standing by. Okay. Now, what you should see on my screen right now is the stock Unum. Unum is an insurance company. They actually own other insurance companies. So if you're familiar with Colonial Pen, <laughs> uh, those ads that are on the price is right, they own Colonial Pen. So this is an insurance company. Been around for a long time. Trading at $18. Here's your dividend, dividend right here. 6.15%. Now, if we look at this over five years, here's really bad news. This is coronavirus, $10.56. Now, when is it a better time to buy Unum? At the peak of bad news or once things have recovered? Obviously, it's a peak of bad news. So that dividend, what was that dividend at $10 a share? 10%. That's real good to get 10% on your money year one. Now, here's the rub. Here's the rub. If we look at a longer time horizon and we look at, okay, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, this stock was trading between 19 and $22. So most people would say, I've lost money in the last 10 years. It's only trading at $19 now. What a waste of my money. 
to have had my capital tied up for 10 years in this business. Now, I get that. This is a this is a, that's a terrible return. Here's the kicker. Get this. Tune in. Remember our rules? Our rules of only buying stocks that have raised their dividend and that we're paying at least a three and a half to four percent yield. This stock would not have have factored in. This stock would not have met our rules ten years ago. Because ten years ago, it had a lower dividend and a higher stock price. So we wouldn't have bought it ten years ago. It wouldn't have met the rules. Today, it meets the rules. So if you look just historically and say like, oh, don't want to buy this stock because it used to be worth more. The question is really looking at the rules, buying when it fits the rules. So if we look back at the example of Target, Target is TGT. So if we look at Target over the last, this is 50 years. Actually, let's, let's just do five years here. This is five years. Over here, when it's trading at $80, doesn't meet our rules. We don't buy Target. It dips to here to $50. Now it meets our rules. We buy it. It climbs back up to $88. It doesn't meet our rules anymore. Now it's too expensive because we're not getting that 4% yield. Now it drops here to 61 it probably meets our rules. Comes back up here to $129. Does not meet our rules. We don't buy more. Drops back down here in coronavirus to $92 a share. May or may not meet our rules. Not sure. Today, we are not buying more Target. Does not meet our rules. It's only paying a 1.7% dividend now. The time to buy this was when there was bad news. Here, here, and here. That's when it meets our rules. So if we only buy on our rules, we avoid, for the most part, the, the big crashes that people fear. You with me? You got this? How's your brain right now? Scott asks, do I disregard on them because they cut their dividend back in 2003, 2004? No, I look for 10 years, 10 years of growth. So have they raise their dividend every year for 10 years? Because that's, that's my signal. And again, are they profitable? Now let's go through another example. Bank of the Ozarks. This is a commercial bank. They lend on a lot of construction. So Bank of the Ozarks trading at $25 pays a 4.35% dividend right now. Look over five years. This is the max. Back here, doesn't meet our rules, doesn't meet our rules, doesn't meet our rules. Now, back starting in 2018, it meets our rules. Now, we've been in a buy territory for Bank of the Ozarks from, from end of 2018 to now. We, it meets our criteria to buy, 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 buy. Now, we're banking on two things. We're banking on this company being profitable enough to continue raising its dividend. And we're banking on this stock staying profitable and in business. Question from Randy, are the dividend amounts static? No, the dividend amounts raise every year. They raise, that's the stocks we're, that's the stocks we're, we're going for. Stocks have raised their dividend every year. Do I look at financial statements to see if they're profitable? You can, and that's an easy Google. But I'm just looking at earnings per share. Earnings per share is the only real thing I'm looking at. 
does the stock have earnings per share and has the, have the earnings per share stayed consistent? So that's an easy Google on any stock. You can look up the earnings per share and see if they're, if they've stayed steady or gone up. So are there profits in the business on a consistent basis? This is an interesting comment. Banks are high risk because many will disappear. You can say that about any industry. You can say it about anything. Everything is always about to disappear. The question is, can that company adjust? AOL didn't adjust. Yahoo kind of adjusted. Yahoo's still around. Yahoo still buys companies. AT&T adjusted. And they're going to have to keep adjusting. Because they're being disrupted too. But they're buying other networks. They're buying other businesses. They're planning ahead. So let's use that as, as our example. Our next example. Target. Or uh, uh, AT&T trades under T. So AT&T trading at $27. Dividend yield 7.5%. That's pretty sexy. Now over five years, again, look at this. Now over the very long term, AT&T has grown, 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 not at a torrid rate, but we're in buy territory now. We were not in buy territory in January of this year. Well, we might've been, depending on, on what the dividend yield was here. Back here in uh, July of 2016, you know, we're at $40. We might not be buying this. On these dips, we're buying and adding our cash flow. Now, remember, folks, remember. Gosh, oh, such an important point. Tune in, everybody. Hashtag. Listen, on those dips, your dividends continue to buy more shares. So if you own... AT&T and it's paying us it's paying a $5 per share dividend or that's no, way too high. They're paying a $2 per share dividend. That $2 is buying more stock. So if it dips, your dividend is buying more stock. Your cash flow is going up. Get it? If you hold, you're buying more shares. You're getting more. The compounding interest continues to go and go and go and go and go and go. All right, this is exciting. This is exciting. All right, so let's look. Let's look at one more example. This. Let me show you like a classic example because what I'm showing you right now is just the stocks I'm tracking right now. Let me show you one that I'm tracking. Actually, there's two on here that are just very classic examples. Like this is the kind of predictable, boring stuff you want. Take a look at Verizon. Verizon trades at V under VZ. So Verizon is selling for or is trading at uh, about $59 a share. Their dividend is 4.25%, right in our wheelhouse, right above that 4% buy signal. Now check this out. Over five years, Verizon has gone from $45 to $59. Now, those returns are not going to set the world on fire. They are not going to turn any analyst heads. They are not going to get a lot of news from Jim Cramer. They are not going to excite Wall Street. You're not going to hear about them around the kitchen table while people are talking about Ethereum and Bitcoin. You're not going to get that 10x return. Going from $40 to $60 over five years yeah, it's a 50% return over five years. It's good. You're not going to hear people talk about it. It's, you're not going to hear that talked about. But it was more than that. It was more than that. Because if you bought it back here at $45 a share and it was paying a 4 or 5% dividend, that dividend's going up every year over these five years, and you're buying more shares. So if you owned 100 shares here, you own 120 or 125 shares here, 
And all of that has gone up in price and you're continuing to get more dividends. This, so so what people would say is, oh, it's a 10% return over five years. That's not that great. No, it's more than that because you were getting dividends of four to 5% and you were buying more dividends every year. So that 10% return is more like 18% per year. You, you see why that's exciting? You see how, you, you, you see why there's reason to be pumped about that? Now, hang on, there's someone at my door. Let me check the ring doorbell. Who is knocking on my door right now? Stand by, this is fun. Oh, oh, it's a handyman. I'll be right back. I'll be right back, don't go anywhere. guys good to see you <laughs> that's funny bitcoin 15k um i i think i don't know what i think about cryptocurrency but i do know what i think about stocks so i invest in things that i know i invest in things that i know so verizon you might say on the surface doesn't have that great of a return but it's much more than the stock value price because you're getting that dividend every year and it's going up over time. You're buying more and more and more and more and more. Uh, and then the last example that I want to show you, and then I'm going to give you an assignment. <laughs> uh, Nick, you made me laugh. Nick, Nick, um, uh, Nick, do we have ink on paper? Can we make an announcement yet? Because I really want to make an announcement when we can make an announcement. Let's, let's wait. We'll wait a couple of weeks until we can make an announcement. But I'm very excited for our for our announcement. Nick and I are having a baby. All right. Uh, Abvi. I love this guy. I love me some Abvi. Oh. Oh. Oh, I love me some Abvi. Abvi is a pharmaceutical company. It's been around for a long time. Uh, if you are familiar with... So the most profitable... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making the announcement. Um, the most profitable drug in the world is called Humira. AbbVie owns Humira. Now they own other drugs too, so they're, but they've been around for a very long time. And, uh, and, and Humira is like, it's their cash cow. So that you might see it average. Next time you watch TV, you'll see an ad for Humira. And, and uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a kind of a natural guy. Like my green smoothie this morning was full of uh, superfoods and stuff. But every time I see that, I'm like, yeah, Humera. <laughs> get it, get Humera. <laughs> Everybody should take Humera. Not really. I'm not a doctor. Don't take my advice. I'm just an investor in Abvi. Um, <laughs> so Humera is uh is one of the the drugs owned by Abfi <laughs> and uh oh I'm so funny. Uh, I'm such a dad. All right. So Abfi trades at $93 a share has a 5.5% dividend. That's great. Like that is that is a very healthy sexy return. Now if we look at it over the last 5 years, we can see that there's been several opportunities for us to buy. So when it dipped here into like a year ago at $65, what was this dividend percentage? Higher than 5%. You know, we're looking at like an 8% dividend. Even here during COVID, peak of COVID, it dropped down to $68 a share. These are our buy signals. It's still in buy territory right now. But when it dipped down to $65, $68 a share earlier this year, how pumped are you to buy this stock, which is probably paying a seven and a half or an 8% dividend? You're thrilled. You're absolutely thrilled to buy on this dip. 
And then when it recovers, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, now you've got a 50% return in the first year because it recovered, but your dividend is still locked in at that eight and a half ish percent return. And you're buying more stock the whole way. So I love me some AbbVie. Uh, one more example came to my mind and now, oh, 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 yeah, I got one more, one more. Is this good? Are you guys still with me? Give me some shouts in the comments. You've slowed down. Have I lost you? Do your brains hurt? Give me the good stuff. Let me know if I'm here. All right. Okay. So I understand, um, Irfan, it's, it's Irfan, right? You're, you're going to do one of these as soon as I explain this to you. And I, I understand why this is confusing, but you're gonna do this as soon as I explain this, okay? Hi, Krista. So let's pull out a handy dandy calculator here. This is third grade math, third grade math. Uh, oh, you can't see that. So let me pull it up on Google. Um, Google calculator. So let's calculate this together. You are going to slap your head so hard. Where's my, oh, oh, I'm coming. All right. Hello, Google calculator. So if a stock is paying, I'm going to make you guys sick with all these screen changes. I know if a stock is paying a two and a quarter, Two point that that's their yearly dividend. Two point two five dollars. They're paying. Let's just make it easy. They're paying two dollars a share in a dividend, and the stock trades at eighty dollars. What is that return? Two and a half percent. Are you with me, Irfan? It's you see that very simple second grade math. Now that same two dollars. Ah. Get out of here. That same $2, if the stock drops to $50, is now 4%. It's the same $2. It's just the cost of the goose. It's still $2 golden eggs, but the price of the gold of the of the goose has gone down. That's that's why the dividend yield goes up when the price goes down. All right, your fund gets it. He gets it. Now, I wanted to show you one more example. GPC. GPC, Genuine Parts Company. The most boring stock in the whole wide world until you look up their company history, which actually has a cool story behind it. But, uh, okay, I'm trying to keep up with your comments. Randy, how often does that $2 change? Every year. Because it goes up every year. We're looking for stocks that increase their dividends every single year. How, how often does it change? Every year and it only goes up. If it doesn't go up, we don't buy it. So, GPC, this was during COVID. Like I don't make stock recommendations. I do not make stock recommendations. But I told the 1% members in COVID, I was like, Everybody might want to Google GPC. You just you just you just want you just might want to Google it. Just look it up. See if you like it. See if it fits in your portfolio. Here's why. GPC outside of our buy territory. See this? But it was on my watch list. 3.24% yield. I am not buying GPC right now. Dividend is too low. It's too low. But take a look at during COVID. Boom. Dropped in half. It dropped in half. So what does that do to this yield? It doubles it, right? So now it's paying six and a half. And it recovered. So you would have doubled your money and you'd still have locked in a 6.5% dividend. That would be buying more shares and growing over time. And you could hold that sucker for a very long time. 
here's here's another one that here's one that y'all might just recognize. It'll be fun because you recognize it. 3M, the glue company. <laughs> Again, the most boring company in the world. Glue and tape. <laughs> glue and tape. That's what 3M sells. So they're trading at 3.6%. So like just in our range, like you might maybe consider it at this price. It's like just high enough to be like, maybe. But look during COVID. Boom. 117. So the stock was on a 30% discount. So this is now four and a half or 5% yield. It's now recovered, but we've locked in that dividend. Over five years... We've had a couple opportunities to buy. So we would not have bought anywhere in here. So from 2017 to 2019, we are not buying 3M. COVID will buy it. So now we, we got an entry point on this. We might have bought it back here in 2016 when it dipped. This whole period here, we are not buying more. We are not buying more. So some of you are asking, like, how often does this happen? Only like once a year or so does one does something on your hot list enter and buy territory. That's when you buy it. So 3M has been a high performer ever since. For the last 10 years, 3M has really performed well. And we were not buying more stock except in a couple key areas. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for stocks. One more example, because I'm having fun. This is Procter & Gamble. Um, when I recorded the, when I recorded the millionaire class, which is in your members area, Procter & Gamble was the example we were watching, that we were looking at. Because Procter & Gamble got crushed while we were recording the class. And it was like, guys, this is just such a good example. It happened. Like, while we're all together, it happened. So Procter & Gamble had a big drop a couple of years ago. So if we see here, Procter & Gamble, 2.2% yield. We are not buying this right now. It's too expensive. We are not buying. This does not have a buy signal. But look over five years. There was this right here. Uh, nope, that's COVID. Right here, right here. This is where... This is where it cratered. So 2018, trading at $90, and then it fell to $72, $73. That was our entry point. That was our entry point when we were recording the class. It actually might have been, was it, how long is that we record that class? Well, anyway, if we just look at Procter & Gamble over time, look at these entry points. So 2007, we're not buying Procter & Gamble. Boom, it falls. We might want to buy it. Here, look at this is 2015, $90, falls to 68, we want to buy it. 2017, it's at, back at $90, don't want to buy it, we want to wait till it to fall here. So Procter & Gamble had this period where about once a year, once every two, actually it's like once every two and a half years, it goes through some period of it's now exciting to buy. COVID was another one. It was at 120 before fell to one looks like 114 110 that was our buy time we're not buying it right now so this is the important thing is for us to keep that portfolio that we're watching and wait for the bad news so let me go over let, let me give you your assignment and then we can take questions if you've got them so your assignment for this class right now is this Google dividend aristocrats that's it just Google it and make a watch list for companies that you recognize just look for companies that are like oh yeah I know what they do I'm familiar with them because there's going to be dozens of stocks Verizon's on there Target's on there Coke is on there AT&T is on there uh, some of the ones we've you know, the ones we looked at are, are, are there. 
So just look for dividend aristocrats that have raised their dividend for the last 10 years and just make a list. Just keep a list uh, in your journal or on a file on your computer and that's it. Just keep that list. We also, if you want some help, your most recent copy of the 1% newsletter, we made a list of some of them that are interesting to, to me, right? I'm just like looking at these stocks. You can start there if you want. If you want to collaborate on this, post in the Facebook group. Find, like post what you discover. Post what you research about these companies. Po and you can post what you're seeing and we can all look at them and review them together. And then we wait for bad news. That's it. You keep your list, you refine it over time and you wait for bad news. And that's what we're going to do together. So if I could get you to do anything to change your financial future, it's this. So go do this. All right. Look, we are way, way over time. So what I would like to do is if you've got a, if you're in the green room and you've just got like a burning ass question, your ass is burning. Uh, go ahead and wave at me. Like, wave at me. I'll take you off mute and we'll do this. Like, Alex, David, uh, Jean-Marc, Amanda, Victor. If your ass is burning, just wave at me. Nobody's ass is burning. So if anybody has an itchy ass, itchy ass, I'll, I'll now take itchy asses. Nobody's ass, <laughs> nobody's ass is itchy. If anybody's ass is running. Just a little bit of leakage. A little bit of leakage going on. Still nobody. Everybody's laughing. I don't know what everybody's laughing about. I'm just trying to help people. Just trying to help. It's not leaking. If it's just a little sore, you've been sitting too long. All right. Um, if, if any of you just want to come up live, wave at me. And we'll do this. Um, I think I scared everybody away with my obsession of talking about asses. ASS, a dividend paying stock. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kirthan. Uh, thank you, Alex, for being in the green room. Thank you, David. Thank you, Victor, for being in the green room. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Amanda, for being in the green room. <laughs> thank you, Tiffany's four-year-old, for laughing at my dad jokes. Um, I'm glad you guys found this valuable. Uh, like, I, I need to point something out. This stuff has been in your members area for the whole time you've been a member. You've just missed it. So this is why we're kind of re- covering some of this so to encourage you to go through that class. It's not a long class, but it's going to cover this and a bunch of other passive income strategies that you can use. And we're going to continue to go through some of them uh, throughout these live classes on Thursday. Now, next week, next week is so important. It's also going to, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to excite you or it's going to hurt your brain. It's probably going to be 50, 50 down, down the road. Um, Next, next week, we're going to talk about kind of a very little known strategy that you can actually boost the cash flow on stocks. So if you're getting a 5% dividend, you can actually boost it to 9, 10, 11%. That sounds super weird, but there's a way, there's a way to do it. And we're going to talk about it next week. We're going to talk about how you can take this portfolio of stocks that are maybe only making 5% per year and then flip a switch and have it and actually double your cash flows. I know that sounds scammy. It sounds weird. It sounds overhyped. It sounds like, what the H are you talking about? Um, what, uh, Victor is laughing at me. No, I, I, I can, you will get it when you see it and it'll be like, why does nobody talk about this? Why is nobody talking? So we're going to talk about that next week as the topic to follow up on this. Because you really only want to do this strategy on the stocks that you want to own for a long time. You don't want to do it on speculative stocks, right? It could get you in trouble if you're doing it. Ah, it's, it's hard to lose when you do that strategy, but it just, it works better if you're going to own the stock for a long time. So we're going to, so I wanted you to see the foundation of the kind of stocks we prefer, and then we're going to boost the cash flows next week. Cool. All right, guys, this is fun. This is my favorite topic to talk about because entrepreneurs tend not to know this stuff. We get so focused 
on building businesses and building profits that we never talk about keeping and growing our profits. But the thing is, what you really want is freedom for you to do the things that you want. And it's the long-term wealth and cash flow that is going to set you free to be able to build the types of businesses that you want instead of the business that you feel like you have to run because you're stressed about money. So if we dial in this piece, it sets your brain free to go build great companies and get really rich and change the world. So that's why this is so important for us to get as entrepreneurs. So this is the starting point. Next week, we're going to turn up the heat a little bit. And remember to get your copy of Why Doctors Don't Get Rich because we're going to be interviewing the author um, probably at the end of this month. Okay, guys. Great to see you. Thanks for letting me uh, chat about this. I'll see you guys next week. Take care.